Hey everybody, this is Jamie from ImagineLabs.rocks and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up and use the iOS style menu choice project. So you can have iOS style menus and panels in your games or in an app if you wanted to make a non-game app using Game Salad. And instead of trying to explain exactly what this does, let me just show you what it does and then I'll show you how it does it and how you can customize it for your own needs. Now it's built as an iPhone 6 portrait project just like all of the projects in the iOS style interface kit for Game Salad. But it's not fitting on my screen. You can't really see the top of the panel up here. So I'm going to switch this temporarily to iPhone 5 portrait and force it to redraw using overscan. And you'll see now it fits on my screen and it's an iPhone 5 portrait size. So what this does is this should look pretty familiar. Imagine this on your iPhone and the screen or the panel as I'm calling them has a title. Maybe it would say settings, for example, in your settings application from Apple. And then you have different menu choices. You can have a menu choice to show panel 2, or to show panel 3, or to show panel 4. And I didn't click down on these. I didn't let go. So all I've done so far is highlight them. That's why they're highlighted in gray. Let me refresh that. But when I click one and let go, you'll see that panel, menu panel, slides over from what would be the off screen to the right hand side of the screen and a new panel of information is displayed. I'm just displaying the same choices to show panel 3 and 4 that were back here on the home screen. And you'll see as I click back and forth, the next panel slides on. And if I click the home panel or back button, the previous panel slides on from the left. So I could go from panel 2 on to panel 3. And then from panel 3 on to panel 4. And then I don't have any additional panels to go to here. So I could go back again to the previous panel, always to the previous panel. But they don't have to be in order. In this case, I went from 1, which is the home panel, to 2, to 3, to 4. Let's say if I wanted to go from the home panel directly to 4, I do that. It's an image panel, or at least that's the name of it. It can be anything you want. You can put any kind of content here. I just put a picture on it for the sake of something different. Now when I click this button, it's not going to go to 3 to 2 to 1. It's going to go directly back to the home panel. Same if I go to panel 3, which I've put some text on. I can go back to the home panel without ever seeing panel 2. And if you're a Game Salad user, or you're experienced anyway, obviously you're a Game Salad user, you wouldn't be downloading this and watching this video. But if you're an experienced user, you might think I'm using the camera to scroll across a wide scene here. And that is not what I'm doing. I'm actually scrolling this scene content is constrained. There's an actor for this full panel and this information is constrained to it. So I can go back and forth in a non-sequential order from 1 to 2 to 3 or from 1 to 4 back to 1 without ever seeing 2 and 3. So that's pretty cool, right? You could see you might have different panels of information. Maybe you have your intro screen that says welcome to my game or my app and then you have you know for settings click here to play the game click here to pick a new character or change the soundtrack click here and it would go to a new screen of information and you click this and it would go to your screen of info you could go to more or you could go back to your game and then maybe click a play button that's down here so you can see I'm sure you can see how this could be used in your game or in your non-game apps. Now let's take a look at what it takes to make this run. I have it set up in one scene. 
And that's all you need is one scene. I mean, you can do whatever you want in your game, of course, but you only need one scene to make this work. Now there's a few actors in here. This actor is just a demo graphic. This actor is just demo text. And this actor is some notes. And as I say, please read the notes in here. In the whole project, in all of the projects to do with the iOS style interface kit, there's a lot of good information and a lot of details in here that if you're going to want to come in here and use this stuff, it really would help you in the long run to read this stuff and understand what's going on in here. These videos are going to help. It's going to let you see it live and in person, but reading the notes is really going to help a lot also. So please don't ignore that. Now there's a few game level attributes in this project. Let's take a quick look at those. There's two tables. There is a menu choices table and a menu panels table. And we'll look at those in a little more detail when we get there. There is a game level attribute for the active panel. And you don't have to change any of this stuff. This stuff is dynamically used throughout the project or throughout your game or your app. So you don't need to adjust these values and if and when you duplicate these in your project, set them as you see here as a 1 and a 0, set the direction to null, set back pressed to inactive boolean. So these are all used in the project but you do not need to edit the values of these and you should not edit the values of these. Let the project do its thing and you'll be amazed at how easy it is to set up and run. So what this consists of, like I said, it, this project is set up as an iPhone 6 project. There's some buttons on screen here already, that's those buttons for show panel 2, 3, and 4. And then there's what I'm calling panels. There's a, several panel graphics. There's one, two, three, and four. And those of course correspond to these panels that you scroll through. The default panel, the home panel, that you can barely see the text up here because it doesn't fit on my screen, is panel one. This panel is panel two, panel three, and of course panel four. And you can set each of these up in your project wherever you want. I just put them for my logical sense. It makes sense to build the home screen of course in its home position on the stage. Each following panel is two and three and four. But that's just from my own mind. I could have put them in any order. They don't need to be beside the scene. I could have made my scene higher. And you can see when I'm saying that what I did was I increased the width of my scene to 2,000. If I had a bunch of panels, I might want to make it 4,000. And this extra space in the scene is just going to allow me to have somewhere to build these panels. The camera's never going to scroll over there. The player's never going to scroll over there. Nobody's ever going to see that. But what this does is it takes these panels and these graphics and these elements and scrolls them on and off the scene here as needed. As I go through this, I think this video is going to have to be broken up at least into two. There may even be a third. I don't want to rush through this. This is certainly by far the most complex element of the iOS style interface kit for Game Salad. Uh, it's probably got the most potential as well because you can see there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. Let me switch this back down to 5. If I were to go to 2 and then 4, that's going to take me back to 2, back to 1. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. You could have a lot of fun with this in your projects and I don't want to rush through it and make it too confusing or any more confusing than it needs to be. And really, it's not. Once you mess with it a little bit, you'll see and understand exactly how this works. And it's really not difficult at all.
So let's take a look at some of these elements in here. Each screen is made up of a panel. So let's look at the panel first. And it's just one prototype actor for a panel. There's one prototype actor for the buttons. And then there's also a back button that you can choose to place on your panels if you want it there. If you didn't want it there for some reason, don't place it. And of course it doesn't need to say the word back. You can see as we use this, I'm actually using the name of the previous panel or screen. See this is called home panel. When I go to the next panel, whatever panel it is, let's say panel 3, instead of saying back, it says home panel. If I went to 2 first, that's now called menu panel and then go to 4. The back button says menu panel, which is where it takes me. And this back button says home panel, which is where it takes me. So those are the three main elements, a panel, a button, a menu button, a back button, and then of course any content you want. But this stuff is not critical to this demo because it's going to be customized by you. If you want text, graphics, animations, whatever you're going to put on your panels. So let's look at the panel. That's the base element first. Again, there's a lot of notes and a lot of well-named behaviors in here. But every panel has a couple actor level attributes. It has an index and every panel has to have a unique index number. Since there's four panels in this demo project, their numbers are one through four. If I were to add a fifth panel, I would make that panel's index number five, and so on. Each panel has a name. You can change that to be whatever you want. You can change it here. And there's also a table that saves and loads the panel information. So you could add or update a panel title here. And this table is going to keep track of each panel's X and Y location and its title. And these are organized by row number. Row number one is going to keep track of panel number one's information. Row number two will keep track of panel two's information. So this behavior is just going to display the panel's name up at the top of the panel. Every time you add a panel in your scene or on your pasteboard over here, every time a panel is added, it's going to add a new row to the table to keep track of that panel. So all of this stuff happens automatically and we'll create a new panel and a new button in this series of videos. So you can see you don't have to do a lot to make this work. All you have to do is add your content to the panels and understand how to get those constrained and locked and displaying on each correct panel. So you don't need to mess with this stuff. It's going to add rows and add the data to the rows and the tables as needed. But it would help if you understand a little bit how it's working. This is going to change a table value. It updates the panel name in the table. And again, there's lots of notes here. This talks about the rule above. Same with this one. The rule above, it tells you what that does. The real meat of these panels is right here in the show and hide panels. And it's this group of behaviors, these two groups either move panels forward or backward based on the game level attribute direction. It's either forward back and then that does get reset to its initial value of null which is nothing as panels move forward and back. So the key things to remember here are every panel has to have a custom index and that index 
is going to be used in these buttons and also most importantly in the content that you want to display on that panel. So let's look at panel two. Well, actually I think it's panel three. Displays a text block right here, which is this demo text content. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna go into the panel actor and you'll see the index of this actor is three. I have its name here, text panel. We could name this something else, let's rename it. So when we play this, you can see that the name does change. Let's call it old text panel. So we changed that a little bit. But the key thing, the index of this panel is three. So I want this text to display on panel three. Now I have it sitting on panel three. That's just for me visually. I could set it over here on top of this giraffe that we know appears on a different panel. So it doesn't have to be physically on this panel here. I just put that because of course it makes sense to me as I'm designing my game or designing my app. I could throw it over here and you'll see before I show you why it's still going to work. Let's go to, right to the text panel. Boom, the text is there even though in the scene I had it on top of this giraffe. Let me show you why. And this is the key. This is how it all starts to fit together. This element also has an actor level attribute called my panel. And you'll see that is number three. So because I want this element to appear on panel three, I have it set to three. If I wanted this to appear on panel four, I would change that to a four. Now we're probably going to get the text and the giraffe somehow overlapping on panel four. So the key thing is any element you want to appear on a given panel make sure the my panel actor level attribute of that actor is the same as the index of the panel that you want it to appear on. Three on the panel and three on the actor. Now that holds true for anything that you want to appear on these panels. This, I wanted this panel to have the back button, so I dropped it in up there. And you'll see in the back button also has a my panel actor level attribute. I want this button to appear on panel three. And we're gonna get deeper into these menu buttons in a minute, but if I double click the menu button on panel three, you'll see there is, in addition to other actor level attributes that we will talk about, there is a my panel attribute, three. So the way all of these behaviors in code works, it knows that this button, this menu choice, and this element all will display and be constrained to this panel as it moves on and off your play area. And then all of these other panels work exactly the same way. Panel two, you'll see it's index is two and every element that I want to appear on panel two has a my panel attribute set to number two. So I'm gonna cut this video here and I'll be back in a second video to talk about the menu buttons and how they're set up and how they make things work in here. So I'll see you in that video.